Shay here. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's WIP and chat. WIP, W-I-P stands for work in progress. Ignore the nails. They're gross. We're just going to skip past those. I'll try to keep them hidden in my hands. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just been a whirlwind of things. Moving, flat tires, accidents, you name it. We've got a whole hodgepodge of stories to give you today. Um, so I'm your host. Uh, my name is Shay. Those that know me call me Shay Shay. You're welcome to. And uh, yeah, let's just treat this whip and chat as a, uh, you can treat it, you can watch me diamond paint. I'm gonna be working on this little cute diamond painting, a little snacky snack. Or um, you can just listen and do chores, errands, drive, whatever you need to do. It can be treated like an audiobook or a podcast. Um, yeah, so let me just keep you company and catch up. How are you? You guys make sure and let me know how you are. I do try to do these uh, weekly. So today is, let's see, it is Wednesday night um, at 8.30 p.m. Um, so Wednesday for me slash Thursday for you if you're watching this the day that it comes out. Hopefully I can get this um, out for y'all um, Thursday. Um, yeah, so there's gonna be no editing. I'm just gonna just upload it and just it goes where it goes, right? So let's talk about what I'm gonna be working on today. I am working on a diamond art club. This is a cute, cute little, I got this from Amazon and it's from the Diamond Art Club, you know, um, storefront that they have. It's the tie-dye French Bulldog. I do have a Frenchie. So um, it's a round and it's super small. It's a nine by 12 in inches or a 22.9 by 30.8 in centimeters. So super cute. Um, it just kind of has like all the colors. There's some confetti I've noticed, which is, which is fine inside the dog, which is what I like. It's small, but it still has a lot to it. So super cute. Um, I just started working on this yesterday and I've already done two squares, so I'm excited. Um, I kind of needed something small. Oh, let me show you all the bigger sticker. This is like a lot of people stick these on their boxes and this is like a logbook sticker, but look at this, look at all the colors and it's just a shadow. They have such a unique, you know, um, profile and just, you know, out, outline to them. You can definitely tell it's a French bulldog. So I had to get it. Um, our Frenchie Ollie, uh, December 22nd was his gotcha day. We got him a year ago on the 22nd of December. So we celebrated a little bit and got him a little cookie and yeah, so that was his gotcha day. Let me go ahead and cut back this plastic and then we'll, I'll show you what else I'm using. It's just bugging me cause I can't diamond paint yet. So what I do is this is just a little ceramic cutter. It's got a tiny, tiny little blade and I mean, it's super, super tiny. And what I do is, and I press down really hard, um, I just press against my washi tape that I've used that I put over the plastic to section it off and I just kind of go down. And then I use my tweezers, kind of pull up the section. And I am using, I gotta find my, I have a little cover minder. What do I do with it? Oh, here it is. I've got a little Frenchie cover minder or a Boston Terrier. I have two Boston Terriers and one Frenchie. So it could be either or, I guess. Let me see if this will work. There we go. And the cover minder just um, holds back your plastic while you diamond paint. So that's my diamond painting today. Uh, it has a lot of colors. It has 44 colors, which is pretty crazy because like I said, a lot of confetti within the, the puppy. And then I'm gonna be using a Bella Arte Nicole tray. It's a little big for the painting, I know, but um, it's just, I thought the pink was fun. I needed something outside of holiday stuff. I just wanted to get into like something new, something different. Um, so I'm using this 3D printed tray from Bella Arte Nicole. And I have all these folks listed down below, all these small shops. And then here I have my trinket tray from Lexi Sparkle Craft. It's pink. It's like a, it's like an orangey pink. It is resin and it's a trinket tray that holds all your little goodies in here. And I do have like I said, my ceramic cutter. I've got my gold tweezers. And then here is the pen I showed you guys from last week that I unboxed. This is my pen from um, Ashley's Creations, Sassy Ashley's Creations. Oh my gosh, well, I forgot. I'll have, I'll have a link down below, I'm sorry. But it is phenomenal. It's got all the colors, just like the puppy in the picture. So I had to use it. I'm uh, using the Diamond Art Club um, placer. This is a six placer. And I've got the little brass tip and I'm using micro glue dots in that. And then my multi-placer, I'm using Randa's Crafty Corner uh, Cherry Fruit Punch Scented Putty. I got this from the retreat that I went to this last year. So I think that's everything. Uh, I'm using Elizabeth Ward. Elizabeth Ward is holding all my 44 colors. 
just, I needed a rainbow of colors. If y'all been watching me, um, you've seen my other whipping chats. I was um, working on uh, Starry Night Santa from Diamond Art Club and it was a lot of blues, blues and whites and blues and whites and more whites and blues. And I just thought, you know what? I need some color. So this is what I pulled out last night. All right, what else am I missing? Is that it? Oh, can't forget. We got our wine. So grab something to eat, grab something to drink. Don't drink wine if it's early in the morning. It's not suggested, but you know, you do you. Um, no judgment here. All right, let me pick a color. I'm gonna grab a nine, because that's what the majority of this in this symbol is right here in between. Uh, it's like a purple. It's like a really soft purple. I'm sorry, if you hear banging around, that is my dogs. That's Ollie, my Frenchie. He loves bones. And he's got these plastic bones that he just drags around the house. And he got some for Christmas. Him and um, Jasper, my Boston Terrier, are having a good old time under my table. And they're just playing. It's so cute. They follow me everywhere. So, of course, you know, they follow me in the craft room. I'm like, I don't want to lock them out. So I just let them come in here. And I've got a dog bed. And they just hang out. So let's get started. I've I've gotten started. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going, y'all. I haven't diamond painted today, so and it has been a day. We will get into that. I'll kind of back up and start like from the beginning. Uh, let's start with last week, okay, where we left off. Um, last week, last Thursday, we were prepping for Christmas, of course, and my husband travels during the week, so he was on his way home Thursday night from Austin because we live in Dallas. And um, that's because we were going to be moving my mother-in-law from Dallas to Austin. So he was gonna be turning right back around and going right back to Austin the next morning. I did take, um, I took Friday off work, the 22nd. So, um, and out of my kids, my oldest Ryan was gonna be staying put and working. And then, um, and he was gonna be watching two of our dogs, the youngest, Ollie, we were gonna be taking him with us, and then Lou, my 11-year-old daughter, and then Nate, my 17-year-old son. He needed to drive my car while we did a U-Haul. So yeah, um, we weren't, we didn't hire any movers. We had looked into it, and it was thousands of dollars, y'all, to have to hire movers. So we thought we can do this. We're like, her house isn't that big, no big deal. So we're like, we can do this in a weekend. It'll be easy. The timing, the timing wasn't ideal. Um, you know how things happen. There's always delays. She was originally supposed to move, I think, in September, and then it was October, and it just kept getting pushed back. The next thing you know, it's ready the end of December, almost Christmas time. So my husband's like, I know it's not ideal, but you know, but at the same time, he had time off from work. So he's like, it's probably a good time for me, you know, to do this and I don't have to work. And I was like, that's true. So uh, the kids had off of they had off of school. Their last day of school was Thursday the 21st. So it's kind of late, but uh, they have the next two weeks off. So uh, they were ready to go and have some fun. So um, waiting for my husband to come home Thursday night. And it was about 10 o'clock at night. And it was raining all day Thursday, you guys. It sucked for me, too, because I was my job is driving around all day, you know, visiting doctor's offices, trying to drum up business for our podiatrist. And it was raining and it was cold. So I was in and out of the car all day long in the cold rain. It was, and people were out last minute Christmas shopping. It was just traffic was really bad. So it was about 10 o'clock that night and I was exhausted, but at the same time I had wrapped gifts already because I knew I kind of had to have everything somewhat wrapped up because I knew that we were going to be gone Thursday, Friday, or not Friday and Saturday, Sunday. We'd become home Christmas Eve, like afternoon, right? And I was like, okay, I need to get all my shit done now. So I wrapped my gifts, um, but there was still one gift I really wanted to get and it was at Target. And Target showed that they had it in stock. And that was a Stanley um, Tumblr, Stanley brand Tumblr for my daughter. It was like her last gift. And uh, so I was at, I was running around to two different Targets trying to get this, you know, cup for her. And my husband calls me about 10 o'clock. And he's about halfway home. And it's about three and a half hour drive from, from here to there. And he does it every week. Uh, but it was raining. So he calls me. And I could tell something was kind of off. I was like, because he was like, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, he goes, are you in the car? And so he kind of was, you know, focusing the conversation towards me. And I'm like, yeah. And he was like, well, um, what are you doing? I'm like running some last minute Christmas errands, something secret. 
and I didn't think he really wanted to know about what I was doing, but um, he goes, so um, I was in an accident. I was like, what, what, <laughs> what's happening here? Um, he's okay, everything's fine, but the car is not okay. Um, he said he was driving one minute and then doing circles, spinning around twice the next minute. So I don't know if he like hit a puddle, but super, super scary stuff. He was on a major highway and uh, he was going about 60 miles per hour. His glasses came off of his head. So his glasses fell off and he, uh, he hit the uh, medium. There's like these walls, you know, that kind of separate the, the, you know, oncoming traffic. And he, um, he hit the wall with his car, but he hit like the back end of it, right? So it wasn't like a, he didn't hit, it wasn't a head on, which was good. Um, no other cars were involved, but super, super scary, you guys, super scary. He called AAA, which we have AAA, and um, they said they would be out, and he waited like two hours, and they still were like not coming. So we just called roadside assistance from our car, and someone finally came out, but bless his heart, he was like on the side of the road for like th over three hours. And here, we were supposed to get up early the next morning and move his mom. <laughs> Um, he was, <laughs> felt so bad. He was sore the next day, but he was okay. He finally got home at like five o'clock in the morning and I had my phone on just in case he needed to call me for me to like come pick him up. Cause you know, at this point we're kind of thinking the tow truck would just kind of like tow him home with the car. Um, uh, but he has some interesting stories to tell me about the tow truck driver. So that was interesting. You know, you're in a car with a stranger, right? For like an hour and a half. It's kind of weird. Um, but nice guy. And he tipped him really nice because it was like, you know, right before Christmas and it was late. So we did that. He did that. That was scary, but I'm glad he's okay. And then um, we woke up. He woke up just exhausted Friday morning. So we kind of got like a later start than we really wanted to. But we had to go pick up a U-Haul and a trailer. Like a U-Haul, like a 15-foot U-Haul and then like a little trailer that you pull behind it. The reason why we couldn't get a bigger U-Haul is because we were afraid that they would not fit in the driveway at my mother-in-law's house and it wouldn't fit like down the alley and in the driveway and it would be blocking, you know, all day. So, um, Lou and Nate and I, and my husband and I, we all hopped in the car. Um, we left Ollie here. We came back to get Ollie after we loaded up, um, which my mother-in-law started loading up. Um, she had more stuff than what we thought she did. Or we just, you know, people have stuff, right? No, 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 no shade. Absolutely no shade. I got stuff. I got too much stuff too. Um, but you know, you accumulate stuff over time. So we kind of miscalculated how much stuff she actually had. So about a few hours in and Nate was amazing, by the way, my, my 17 year old was amazing moving. He's been working out and hitting the gym every day. So he was like lifting furniture and then I'd have a turn and then he would take a turn, but he did so much. So, so much. He's amazing. And I paid him afterwards. I was like, here you go, buddy. So, um, but yeah, he was great. Um, he kept saying, I wish Ryan was here too. We could have used his help. I'm like, it would have been too many cooks in the kitchen. You know, you can only have like two people moving something at once, right? I mean, like moving one piece of furniture and everybody else is kind of staying around. Lou was kind of bored. Cause you know, you kind of have to load up a truck in a certain way, right? It's like, it's like Tetris, you know, to get everything to fit. So it was kind of slow going. Trying to decide like what we were gonna put in. Um, we had to move couches, uh, recliners, uh, washer and dryer. Uh, yeah, so it was it was a day. Um, so after a few hours, we realized we were running out of room. So we um, Nate and my husband and I hopped in the car, or no, Lou went with us, and we got another U-Haul. We got a 20-footer, like an even bigger one. And I had to drive that one because I was not an authorized driver on the first one because we didn't think I was gonna be driving that one. Uh, but once we got a second one, we're like, oh, I'm gonna be driving that. So y'all, I drove this huge ass truck. I mean, big truck, <laughs> big truck, full of stuff, three and a half hours. Um, we finally left, um, made it to uh, Austin about two o'clock in the morning. Um, Ollie was amazing just a good, good boy. It was, let's see, my husband was in the first truck. It was like a caravan. It was my husband with the trailer. And then I was behind him. And then he, Lou was with him with Ollie, like the first half of the trip. And then we stopped to get food halfway. 
Um, and then she was with me and Ollie was with me in the second half of the trip. But it was my husband, it was me, and then it was my mother-in-law in their car and her husband. And then it was Nate behind them. So we had like a, Nate was in my car. So we had like a, a caravan. Um, we stopped like halfway and got a burger and fries. And then on the road we went. So got in, went to her house, basically just like dropped off the U-Hauls and hopped in my car and went to our hotel. We were so, so, so tired, just exhausted. Um, good thing we decided not to try to all do it in one day. So, um, you know, it was just so late. And so we got up the next morning, grabbed some breakfast at the hotel. It was raining and uh, headed back to her house and unpacked her. Now unloading was a lot faster. She was kind of directing us, tell us like, you know, what room things went in. We kind of had a pile on the garage of like kitchen boxes and we were just trying to, you know, keep it all, keep it all straight keep it all going. And we had a good little system going. So we stopped and had lunch halfway and then we kept moving. And then, um, the kids and my husband and I, we finished about seven o'clock that night, um, Saturday night. And so the kids and I, and my husband, we went to wild Buffalo wild wings. My husband, uh, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law stayed back. They were just exhausted and they just wanted to kind of stay put. So we let them chill. We, we brought them home some food. And then um, went back to our hotel that night and we had all these grandiose ideas of like going shopping at the shopping center that they have in Austin. That's really cool. We even stayed at our hotel, like down in that area, which our hotel was about 20 minutes from where she lives. That didn't happen. Y'all it was move, 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 pack, pack, pack. I mean, it was like we were busy. So, um, but Lou was great. Nate was great. Everybody kind of chipped in and um, we unloaded and we kind of had a time crunch because we had to be back on Christmas Eve by 3.45 p.m. Because I had ordered barbecue from a local barbecue place for Christmas dinner with like the sides and the ham and the turkey and all the things. So they closed at 4 and the latest you could pick up is 3.45. So I was getting really nervous because we kind of had slept in and uh, I say kind of, but we, I kind of wanted to get an earlier start than we did. We ended up... Um, going we'll see so first thing in the morning we had to go get gas right drop off both u-hauls after getting gas in them uh, my windshield wiper stopped working and so we had to like pull over and figure that out it was just one thing after another um but we headed out got her all situated they're super happy it's a beautiful house um and so 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 happy i'm sad that they're further away um you know because they used to be just about 25 minutes from us and now they're three and a half hours. So my parents have moved and then now his parents have moved. So it's like, oh, it's kind of a bummer, but I, I understand why. Um, my husband will actually get to see her every week, see his mom because he travels there and we won't have to pay for a hotel anymore. He'll, he has a room, which is great. He got a bed and yeah, it's really cool. So got that done. We ended up getting back into town, getting back into Dallas about, let's see about 3.20, pulled up at the barbecue place. They were super busy and people waiting in line. So everyone waited in the car and we went and picked that up and um, came home and was tired, very, very tired, but had to kind of wrap up, you know, Christmas stuff. So I wrapped last minute gifts. And then um, Brian had, this is his first year y'all that, cause he's 18 and he's been working and he, this is the first year he bought gifts for everybody was so sweet. Um, he got, he got a, he did a basket for Lou and a basket for me. And they were like, there was eight or nine different things in this basket with a blanket and lotions and this and that, cups and hat. It was hats. It was so, so, so nice. So he needed help wrapping his gifts. So I stayed up and wrapped his gifts, but I was like, by nine o'clock, I'm like, I can't, I'm like so done. Um, so kind of got everything wrapped up for Santa and did all the things. And then, um, I was like, because Lou knows, our youngest is Lou, she's 11. Um, she can't, we have a rule Christmas morning. You can't wake us up before 7 a.m. You can't do it. So she woke up, she says on her own, which I can't believe she didn't even set an alarm. She woke up like at 7.15. Came next to me, she's like, mom, it's Christmas. I was like, oh my gosh. So she woke me up and then she was so excited about her stocking. She had a theme in her stocking, everything was pink. She's very into pink right now. That's like the thing. Um, and preppy is like the style. 
So, and she went up and woke up her brothers and they both came down. It was really sweet because sometimes, depending on the Christmas, you know, the boys are kind of tired and if they, you know, stayed up late the night before, they don't want to come down early, but everybody came down and my husband came out. We were all like ready to go. And then uh, we turned on Elf, the Christmas movie. And basically Elf ended and we were done opening presents. We, we do it, we kind of try to do it slow. Everybody takes a turn. Uh, we all open them, you know, one at a time, kind of in order. And we kind of look at everyone's gifts and, you know, maybe open them. So like open the packaging. I got some cool stuff, y'all. I got a new, um, a new Keurig, new coffee maker. I got a Ember coffee mug. And if you're not familiar with them, they are, I haven't used it yet, but I'm, I'm charging it. It's a, um, I guess it keeps your coffee hot. It like keeps your mug stays warm. It's got like this little like plate at the bottom that keeps it warm, um, which is so funny because I got, so my husband got that for me and I got one for him. And it's funny because whenever Lou was handing out the gifts for everybody to have one, every, we kind of make sure everyone has one before we do our next round. And she handed, you know, her dad his and she handed me mine and, and he opened up his and I was looking at Lou. We were kind of smiling because she knew what I got him. And, uh, and then I opened up the same thing. We were like, no way. Like, like right, right next to each other. We opened up our, our same ones. Um, I had to return his after all. It's so sad because I ended up getting the 10 ounce, which is a smaller one. And he's a big guy and he's got like big hands. I got the 14, he got me a 14 ounce and he got me like a copper color. I got him gold because he likes the San Francisco 49ers, the football team. And they're like red and gold. So I thought he would like a gold one. Uh, but I got it on Amazon, so I've got like all the stuff printed out to return it. But it was a good day, y'all. I got, um, he got me a pair of scrubs, mm -hmm. some black scrubs from Amazon. They're called figs. And it's funny because I've been wanting some figs and I was looking online at him and I said, how did you know that? He goes, I did my research. Mm -hmm. So they're so soft. They're a little more expensive than the ones I had bought, but I didn't know any better when I was buying mine in the store that I bought them at. So um, the kids had a great time. Everybody got, you know, headphones and jerseys and makeup and pajamas they wanted. It was just, it was so fun. It was a great day. So after we did gifts, um, then we, everybody kind of chipped in, except for me. I didn't really help out. I was too busy cleaning up the living room um, from the, all the wrapping paper and all the things, trying to make sense of everything. But my husband and the kids started making um, breakfast casserole. It's one of our um, Christmas traditions. My husband always makes his famous breakfast casserole. It's got eggs and, you know, frozen hash browns and sausage and onions and bacon and all the things. So he made, they made that and it took about an hour um, to make. So by the time it was done, it was almost like a lunchtime thing. It was like a brunch, I guess. We had some fruit on the side and the kids just kind of went up in their rooms and and then Lou's friend, her best friend came over and they were looking at each other's gifts. So it was a good day. It really was. Um, kind of just watched football that day and kind of just, um, I did laundry and dishes and tried to catch up a little bit because we'd been gone. Right. And then, you know, I had to go back to work the day after Christmas. I didn't get any time off. Everybody else was home and I was like, Oh, I had to go right back to work the next day. And then the days I had off were pretty much, you know, moving. So, um, yeah, I tried to relax a little bit and I did, I did, but you know, it was, it was back, back to work. So we did our barbecue, um, and the 49ers played at seven o'clock that night. It was so weird. I kept thinking that, that, um, when we were watching football on Monday, when Christmas, I kept thinking it was a Sunday, you know, I didn't have my live, uh, it kind of felt like a Sunday. We were watching football and no one was working at school. It was just weird, but it was Monday. So I just kind of, I felt off all day. I wasn't sure what, what day it was. Um, did y'all watch the Christmas premieres? They were so good. They were just amazing. I was able to catch some here and there. I've been watching them on the replay and uh, they're really, really good. So if y'all, um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'm sure you've probably already found it by now. Sorry, I put some in the wrong spot. I gotta move some things around. Um, now I can't see. I scooched the glue around and I can't see. I think this is the symbol. Um, yeah, I'll, if y'all haven't seen them, so I'll put a playlist in the description of the video and that way y'all can um, watch the replay if you haven't seen them yet. But it was um, every hour on the hour for three days of uh, creators keeping folks company. 
and they're really, really good. And I'm sorry that I missed this year. It just, uh, you know, I had to be, I had to be honest and it just, it was too much, but you know, I still love you guys. Hope you love me. And you know, I, I was kind of sad that I missed it. I was in the group chat with all the creators talking and I'm like, mm -hmm. I missed it, but you know, I had to be honest with myself and had to be realistic and say, I just can't do it this time. You know, I just started working full time, you know, three weeks ago and I'm trying to get adjusted and we were in the middle of moving my mother-in-law and it, it would have been crazy. I don't think I would have been able to be in, been in the live chat because at four o'clock we were just picking up the barbecue. So I just would have had that, that extra stress, you know, I've just, um, needing to be home at a certain time. It was already like a lot. So you know, I was happy at the same time that I was realistic, you know, and that I knew it was too much and I recognized that and, you know, it's okay to ask for help. And that's what I did. You know, I didn't suffer through and, um, and Alyssa was amazing. E was so good. And she took my time slot and, uh, yeah, it was really, really good. I, I haven't watched them all yet, but I've been trying to catch up as I can. Um, but like I said, I had to go back to work on, um, the next day. It was interesting because what I do is, you know, I go around to doctor's offices and uh, try to get, you know, go to primary care and pedi pediatricians and dermatologists and just try to see if anyone needs a podiatrist. And I hand out our information and give my little spiel. I would say about 40% of the, the doctor's offices I went to the day after Christmas were closed. Yeah. So it was kind of like eh, a meh kind of day, you know? Um, and everyone that was working was kind of like, yeah, I don't want to be working today. Like I was kind of commiserating with like some of the, the worker bees, you know, we were all out there working some of the ladies at the front desks and the doctor's offices. I was like, yeah, here we are working today, but they were really cool. And we were just kind of joking about it, you know, how our families were still sleeping and yep. Um, so that was, um, that was the day after Christmas. I went to work and then, um, it was fine. And then came home and everyone was here. No big deal. Everything's all good. And by the way, we're trying to decide what to do about my husband's car because um, we don't know if it needs to be totaled. It's stuck in the driveway. He can't drive it. So we're trying to decide like what to do there. If we should like get something new. Uh, you know, we've got two other drivers, right? There's four of us that drive. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. Um, to add on to all the car stuff. Um... Nate had his truck. He parks his truck um, in front of our house on the street. And over Christmas, like the two weeks before, it was like a week or two before Christmas. And I forgot to tell you all this. Um, I was out with Lou and her friend. I took them ice skating. It was like a Saturday night. And uh, my husband was here and, you know, Nate was here. And the doorbell rings about nine o'clock at night. And I guess uh, it was our neighbors across the street. And the little girl, her friend that was coming to visit her, who just started driving, backed up into Nate's truck and broke the taillight and damaged the bumper. So yeah, we have to get that fixed. He's been driving it because it's, it's kind of, it's not like, a, it's like minor damage. They weren't going fast. They were just backing up. So we got that. And then, you know, my husband hits his car really bad. It's bad, y'all. We don't know if it's going to be totaled or not. We need an estimate, but they're very, very backed up. So we're trying to decide what we're going to do. But after I tell you this, you'll know what we're doing now <laughs> after today. Um, so I go to work this morning, right? Uh, Lou has no school, so it's like super chill. Now for my job, I drive my own car on Mondays and Tuesdays. And I kind of just do the areas around where I live. The city's kind of, you know, about 20 minutes away, kind of surrounding areas. And then Wednesday through Friday, I drive the company car. And I, you know, I do that. So I drove my car on a Tuesday. This week was kind of different because it was a holiday, right? On Monday. Anyways, so I did drive my car today. Um, I started working from home, you know, got my spreadsheet out and kind of figured out, mapped out my day of where I was going to be going and what visits. And then um, hopped in my car. And everybody was still sleeping. Hop in my car and I have to go about... 20 minutes away, right? But at the same time, I have to avoid tolls because I have a toll tag. Uh, we have like tollways out here that you have to pay for. And being I'm in my car, I do get paid for mileage, but I don't get reimbursed for using our toll tag, like for getting toll, you know, purchases. So I try to avoid tolls. So it was like, it was, it went out of my way 
to the first doctor's office. It was about 30 minutes, right? So I um, did a little video for my Patreons like I normally do in the mornings. And then um, it was about, mm, let's see, it was about 9.30. No, 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 it was about 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Because I left the house about 8.30. It was about 9 o'clock. I was almost to my destination and I saw Starbucks on like a drive through And I was like, you know what? I got a Starbucks gift card for, for Christmas. I'm going to treat myself. And cause I didn't bring any coffee from home and on for the road. So I was like, I'm going to treat myself and I'm going to get a little coffee before I go to my first stop. So right as I'm starting to pull over, thank God I was starting to pull over. Um, on my screen of my car pops this, uh, alert saying, hazard, hazard, you know, uh, caution, caution, uh, low tire pressure, pull over immediately. And I was like, what? Now I kind of ignored it at first because I, my tires, all four of my tires were low and I was already getting that notification. Um, and I was like, yeah, it's just the weather, you know, when it's cold, your tires get, you know, they, they get low, but it's, this is what happens, right? Because the weather. So I kind of ignored it because I'd had it on there for a long time. And so at first I was like, yeah, but I was like, but I've never seen that message, right? So kind of was like, yeah, I was kind of worrying about Starbucks more than my car. I was like, it's fine. So I kind of started to pull over. Thank God I turned into that parking lot right next to Starbucks because it went from zero, <laughs> 90 to, it went, it went quick. Let's just say everything happened very, very fast. Um, so on my screen in my car, it tells me my PSIs, right? My, my tire pressures. And so uh, all, all four tires, so three of the tires were like 34s. And my rear driver side uh, tire was at um, 30. And that's when that message came up. And I was like, oh. And so I typed in like nearest gas station because I'm like, oh, I just need some, I just need some air because it's that stupid, you know, you know, low tire pressure thing I've been getting for like a week now. And so I was kind of ignoring it. And uh, I typed in gas station and it was like, the, there was no real, there was not a gas station close by to get air. So I was like, okay, this isn't going to work. So I'm looking at the tire pressure numbers and you can see the numbers and it goes, it's at 30 and it goes to 15. And I'm like, oh no, this is bad. <laughs> this is really bad. So at this point I was just kind of like pulled into a parking center, like a shopping center on a parking lot, like kind of crooked. I wasn't in a parking spot. And I was like, you know what? I don't think I'm going anywhere else. I think I'm done. I, I think I'm, I think I have a flat tire. So I back up my car. And I put it actually into a parking spot just in case, right? I'm going to be there for a while. And I see it go to 10. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And the rest of them are not moving. And I'm like, something, this is not right. And then I'm starting to like tilt, right? So um, I get out of my car to see what's going on. And I can hear, I can hear it. Psst. I can hear the air coming out of my tire. And I'm like, oh no. So I look at my tire and I can see a, uh, a good size, I mean like a good size uh, piece of metal stuck in my tire. And I'm like, there it is. It wasn't, an, it wasn't a nail. It was like bigger than a nail. It was like a shard of metal. I don't know where I picked it up from. I don't, I don't remember seeing anything like that. But um, yeah, so it's progressively going down fast. And I get back in my car and I'm like, and I look at my screen and it's at one. I have one tire pro. I have one, one. One is all I had. And I'm like totally sideways in my car. I'm like, Arr. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm done. I'm down for the count. Um, so I called my husband. Thank God he's off this week and he's home. Cause normally if it was a regular week, he wouldn't be home. Now we do have AAA and he's like, call AAA. Well, remember my story at the beginning of the whip and chat about him calling AAA and they never came. He was just talking about it the day before about canceling AAA. He's like, I think I'm going to cancel it. You know, I tried to use it and they weren't any good. And I was like, yeah, and I've never used it. Well, he's like, do you have your AAA card? I'm like, I do. And I had woke him up. I felt so bad. It was like, it was like nine o'clock in the morning. Here, this poor guy's trying to be on vacation. And uh, so he's like, call AAA. And if they're going to be a long time, um, call him back and maybe just we'll call a different roadside service. I'm like, okay. So I call them and it says they're going to be there within the hour. I was like, all right. And I'm thinking I can walk over to Starbucks because I parked into a, like a steakhouse, like a fancy steakhouse right next to the Starbucks I was going to go to. And it's right off of a major intersection or a major highway. So um, I'm start, I start getting these text messages saying they're, they're almost here. And I'm like, wow. So y'all, the whole thing was like, 
impressive. I'm, I gotta give him some props because it was like, yeah, 15 minutes later after I called, here comes that tow truck pulling on up. I was like, yes. Um, the guy was super, super nice. He was funny. So, um, he was kind of dirty, you know, from just like, you know, I was his last stop. He said he j was going to take one more. He got the call and he was like, cause he, he works all night and, uh, he was going to be done for the day or for the night. And I was his very last stop. So he was like dirty from like, you know, dealing with cars and stuff. And he, uh, he backs up his tow truck, um, gets it in the front of my car and tries, you know, is getting ready to put it up on the lift. And, uh, he opens up my car to move it, uh, to drive it up on the, the ramp. And I have white interior. And he was like, Oh, Oh, I don't want to get your car dirty. He's like, how do you, do you feel comfortable driving up this ramp? I was like, mm, no, <laughs> but, um, I, I could try. He's like, all right, go. So I was scared y'all. I was scared because he wanted me to back up and, and get even with this ramp. Cause he didn't pull up even cause there was like a curb and everything. And I was like, Oh my gosh. And I felt like I was, I'm riding on a rim. Right. And I felt like I was going to break something. So, um, I real, ha you know, real slowly backed up my car, even kind of got it. And he was watching me and he runs up to the top of the ramp cause he's going to guide me in and he kind of guides me up and I'm going, Ooh, going straight up this ramp. It was scary. And then I open up my car door and he's, he's like this. He's got his fist out with his arm like this. I was like, I looked at him and I'm like, I thought he was giving me a fist pump, but I was like, that's weird. Uh, I mean, it's kind of, I thought maybe he was like, give me a fist pump. Like, Hey, you did it. But I'm like, what? And he goes, Oh, I I'm giving you my arm to help you down. Cause I had to get out of my car and walk down this ramp. Like I felt so stupid. <laughs> I was like, Oh, Oh, okay. 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 So <laughs> he called. So got down the ramp. Um, Super, it was my first time to ever be in a tow truck and ever see a car like, you know, get set up on all that. It was like my very first time. Um, my husband did say when the tow, tow truck gets there, because in my car, we don't have a spare tire. I forgot to tell you that part. Nope, no spare. There's no room for a spare. I have a, an electric vehicle, so no, no room for a spare. So there was no changing a tire at this point. Um, so I looked it up before he got there and there was a discount tire, like two and a half miles from where I broke, where I got my flat tire. So I told him that he's like, yeah, I'll take you there. So he takes me there. Super, super nice guy. We're talking about football and he's like a huge Dallas Cowboys fan and talking about his kids. He was super nice y'all. And I regret not tipping him. I told my husband, I'm like, did you tip your guy whenever you got towed? He's like, yeah. I was like, oh man, I'm like the worst y'all. I'm the worst, but I wish I could get his information and give him a tip. Cause he was really nice. Um, so I kind of messed up on that, but you know, I didn't know. It's my first time to ever be towed. I didn't think about it till after. So he takes me to discount tire and, um, they are busy, 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 busy. So busy. Got there about 10 and talked to one of the guys, one of the technicians. And he's like, yeah. So, um, he sees the big, you know, piece of metal. I said, so I really don't want to get new tires. We're not ready. We're not prepared. My husband just wrecked his car. We're trying to figure out what to do there. I'm like, please. I'm like, if y'all can just patch this up just for today and then we'll figure out what we're going to do. But I don't think we're like ready to like buy four new tires for this car. And he was like, okay, I'll see what we can do. He's like, but it might be too big, but I'll let you know. I was like, okay. I sat there for two hours here it is noon. And I've been talking to my husband off and on. He was heading up there. He's like, I'll come up there. And it was about 30 minutes from where he was. Um, so he was so sweet. He came up there. Um, but what we decided to do is they finally came out about an hour and a half later. And they told me that the hole was too big to, you know, fix it. Their plugs aren't big enough. And I was like, all right, hey, you're going to need new tires. And I was like, well, let's just get one new tire for now. Right. Let's just replace the one. He's like, ah, it's not recommended because it's going to wear differently if you get, and I was like, I, it's not going to be a long time. We just got to figure out, you know, what we're going to do now being this big cost and big, you know, expend expenses here. It's like, we weren't prepared for this. <sighs> so, um, he looks up in his system and he's like, I'm like, what is, can you, would you have the cheapest, the cheapest tire you have that will fit on my car that will work? That's what we'll take. He goes, and he looks on the, the computer screen. He's like, I don't have anything. I like, oh my gosh. So he goes, but another store in town has one. So we'll have to ha call our courier 
our courier service and have it brought over. I was like, all right. At this point, um, my husband shows up and I was like, oh, thank you. Just, you know, it's just been alone for so long and it was scary. The whole thing was scary, the whole experience. And, um, but he came and talked to the guy too. And he said, you know, I'll call y'all, you know, when it's, when it's the tire gets here. And at this point it's probably about, it's about 1230. Yeah, it's about 1230. So we're like, okay, so um, my husband hadn't eaten lunch and neither had I, so we went and had lunch together. So it, the day was just not not how it was planned for. You know, it was just like, it was so unexpected. I didn't know what was going to happen next. It was not going according to plan. Let's just put it that way, you know? It's like, things happen and you just have to go with it. It was like one of those days. So I did contact work. I um, forgot to tell you all that. I did contact work whenever um, I was waiting for AAA. And I just let the office manager know that, um, I had a flat tire and I was okay. Um, but I was waiting for AAA to come get me and, um, I would update them later. Once I got to discount tire and they told me that they didn't have the tire and they were going to have to order it and find it and all this. I just, I finally told them, I said, you know, I'm not going to be able to, I thought, cause I was, I thought maybe I could go back to work, but I just told them I, I can't go back to work today. I don't have a tire and they're trying to find one for me. So, um, they were, they were totally cool with it. They were like, no, thanks for letting us know. No worries. So, and then this afternoon, they sent me a message. Now, y'all, I've been at this job for three weeks, okay? Three weeks. I get a message this afternoon from the office manager saying, we hired a new marketing person. She started today. Her name's Lisa. And normally, we would have her go out with the girl who I had gone out with my second day, right? The first day is shadowing the doctor. Second day is going out with another marketing person and seeing what they do and getting training on the job training. So that girl that I'd gone out with is um, really good. That's been there for a while. Like she's been there for like a year and a half. She's on vacation this week. So they're like, uh, can she go with you tomorrow and drive around with you? Can you train her? I was like, say what? I've only been here three weeks. I, I mean, and of course I try to look at positively. I'm like, well, I guess they think I'm doing okay if they're going to give me someone to train or I'm just a last resort. I don't know. But I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I mean, it's not that hard, but I'm like, I feel kind of nervous. So I'm going to be training some lady tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to be in the car all day with someone I don't know. How awkward is that? Mm, yeah, I'm a little, ugh. we'll have to see how that goes. So anyways, let me finish telling you my story. So, um... We left there, had lunch, and then we were like, so, you know, let's go to a dealership and look, because my husband needs a car, right? He needs a car next week to get back to work, to go to Austin. I mean, he needs a car to drive for work. No choice. Got to have a commuter car. And we're like, if we rent a car, it's going to be very expensive. Let's just see how much, you know. So we go to a dealership. We're there like a long time. <laughs> All afternoon. Um, he did get a car. Um, he needed something right away. And so he has to um, fly to El Paso to pick up this car and then drive nine hours home. And he has to do this by the end of the year to get some rebate and something. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I I'm out. I'm like, you figure that out. So that was one thing we accomplished today. Um, yeah, so I kind of had like a day, like a hooky day, and I didn't even know I was getting it. So at this point, we still haven't heard from them, and it's like four o'clock, and they close at six. And we're like, are they ever? Because we're kind of like trying to stay in that area of where it happened. And we're like, well, I guess we'll go home. And so I called them, and they're like, well, it's not done yet. I don't know if we have a tire yet, but it'll be done by the time we close. I'm like, all right. So we come home for like an hour and a half. And then about 5.30 tonight, we um, headed up there. $500 later. Yes. Got a new tire. I'm very, very scared though. Um, the whole way home, my husband, you know, went and picked up dinner on the way home. So I was like by myself going home and I was really, really scared because of this morning. You know, I kept like looking at my screen and, and that, that notification still there that there's low tire pressure. Um, so my other, my other three tires, they put air in them. So they're like 41, but then this little booger is like 30, 30 something. So it's like 37. They're like 42 and they're like 37. So it's definitely lower. So that alert was still on the screen. So it kind of had me a little, a little twitchy. I was like, oh, I don't know if I like that, but y'all was scary. It was so, so scary. Oh my gosh. But what a day. Did I forget anything? 
it just feels like <laughs> it just feels like I don't know you know you just have those days where you're like what is happening what's gonna happen next it was like that kind of feeling like you don't know like when's the next shoe gonna drop you know or whatever that saying is um but I hope you guys had a good Christmas please let me know down in the comments um how your holiday was um you know if you celebrated if you didn't that's fine. Let me know what you did. Either way, let me know what you did or didn't do. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the premieres. They were fun. They were a lot of fun. Um, I didn't take any notes, so I don't know if I forgot anything. I haven't really gone a full hour. It's 45 minutes. Uh, let's talk about what's coming up. So, um, oh, I just finished a square. Yay! I got my little puppy's feet going. I'm loving this one. There's some ABs. Let me see. There's one, two, three, four ABs in this little baby, which is crazy. Let me get a little sip. So yeah, um, we'll see how tomorrow goes. See if it's back to normal. I'll be training off to let you know who that goes. So weird. I've only been around for three weeks and they're already throwing me in to like train someone. I'm like, really? Okay. But there's another guy that does the same job in our marketing team that's been there for six months. And why didn't they ask him? But I'm thinking maybe because he's a guy, she's a girl, you know? So I told my husband about it and he goes, look on the bright side. He's like, maybe it's something, somebody you like. Maybe you'll make a new friend. I was like, yeah, that's true. He goes, or maybe she's super young and think you're like an old lady, <laughs> an old Karen. I'm like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> She's going to be thinking the same thing I am. Like, oh God, I got to be in this car all day with this lady. So yeah. Um, okay, so what's coming up? What is coming up, y'all? Um, yeah, we're getting there. Let's see. When is New Year's? I need to look at my calendar. Let's see. Well, let me look that far. Um, okay, so Sunday. No way, y'all. Is that right? Is Sunday the 31st, New Year's Eve? Are we gonna do your New Year's Eve live? I'm just thinking about my live. I hadn't even looked. We don't have any plans for New Year's Eve. Maybe we'll hang out. Y'all let me know. Do you wanna, if, I, if I'm looking at my calendar right? Let me grab a paper calendar behind me. Hold on. Okay, I got my big old happy planner here that I use. Sorry, it's super zoomed in. Let me just uh, take a look at this. I just want to make sure I'm looking at this right. Where is January? All right, let's see. Oh my goodness, we are. Sunday is, because look, New Year's Day is, Jan is Monday, January 1st. So should we do a New Year's Eve live? Y'all let me know down in the comments. Let me know if y'all want to celebrate New Year's Eve together. I don't think I've ever fallen on that day before. Uh, and if you're new, I do go live um, on Sundays normally at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. So maybe we'll just use that as our... Um, oh, and this is what I do at the end after I'm done with the section. I grab my ceramic cutter again. And I start on this side. And I just kind of slice the top. And there you go. And just voila. You got your little strip. Um, and then this one I want to cut because it's the very end. I'll just peel it up. But I just, I needed to work on something small. Um, I also need to do my video for end of year at some point. Um, I do have some stuff coming up. I've got some Bella Art Dana Cole, um, Bella Art Diamonds, excuse me. Uh, Bella Art Diamonds, a sneak peek. I've got three to unbox for you guys because they're coming out with some new images. And so I've got those to do. And... I did order the uh, Cowardly Lion from Hannah Lynn from Diamond Art Club. So I've got Dorothy and the Cowardly Lion to unbox. But yeah, um, if I've forgotten anything, I feel so discombobulated because I don't have my notes. But um, I guess we're going to end it here. I just feel like I'm rambling at this point. So <laughs> I better stop. <laughs> what time is it, y'all? Is it almost bedtime? Yeah, it's 922. Oh my gosh. I got to get ready for bed. Um, but I love you guys so much. Let me know how you are, what you did during this time and what you're up to and answer all my questions that I asked. And if you guys enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up down below. They really do help. And if you have not subscribed, uh, please do. I would absolutely love to have you. It is free. 
It doesn't cost a thing to subscribe. So just click on that button down below. It says subscribe. And then next to that, there's a notification bell. And if you click on that, that just notifies you whenever I post up any new videos. All righty. Um, I love you guys. And that was nice to catch up. <sighs> feels good to get everything off my chest. This is like just free therapy, y'all. It's free therapy. It is. Um, but y'all take care. Let me know down below again how you are, what you've been up to, and how you're doing, okay? All right, y'all take care, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye, guys.